Hi, my name is Chris and this is Battle Nonsense. Today's video was not sponsored by Untangle, nor Sotec, nor Ubiquiti. It was made possible by the support of my awesome patrons. An issue that affects many gamers is buffer bloat, or how iCloud, Dropbox, OneDrive, Netflix, YouTube, or any other online application or file transfer over the internet can have a negative impact on real-time applications such as online games. Active or smart queue management algorithms like FQCuddle or Cake help to prevent that your ping suddenly goes from 10 to 500 milliseconds as soon as your wife's phone connects to your Wi-Fi and starts to sync pictures with the cloud. However, if you want to get a router which supports FQCuddle or Cake, then I would not go for one of those so-called gaming routers, where you pay a hefty markup just for the gaming name and that stealth fighter design of the router. You can get much better active or smart queue management from enterprise routers, like the edge routers from Ubiquiti, which support FQCuddle. But with smart queue enabled, the edge router light cannot do more than 60 megabits per second. The cheap ERX will limit you to about 100 megabits per second, and the ER4 will max out at around 200 megabits per second. So if your internet connection provides like 500 megabits per second, but still suffers from buffer bloat, then you want a router which does not limit you to 200 megabits per second like the ER4 would with SmartQ enabled. A great alternative is OpenWRT, which is available as custom firmware for off-the-shelf routers from companies like Netgear or APU boards from PC engines. And there is also an x86 build, which you can install on pretty much any PC. It also supports both FQCuddle and its successor Cake. But how much throughput you get with OpenWRT still depends on the hardware that you run it on. So if you have a router which is supported by OpenWRT, then you can try to install it on your router or an old PC and see if it works for your internet connection and bandwidth. But make sure that you carefully read the setup instructions to avoid issues when flashing the OpenWRT firmware onto your off-the-shelf router. Now, while FQCuddle and Cake help to prevent these massive ping spikes caused by buffer bloat, there are still cases where you will run into issues even with these active. On one hand, there is framing, which I plan to do a separate video on. And on the other, there are applications like Steam, which open a ton of sessions or connections to max out your download bandwidth. And that can still cause ping spikes even with FQCuddle or Cake active. That said, the ping spikes are much smaller than without these algorithms, but depending on your connection, they can still be very noticeable and trigger warning icons inside games. To avoid that, you could use the download limiter inside of Steam, or use NetLimiter to cap the download speed of applications which create that many sessions. But what if you want to let the router control how much bandwidth an application gets, and automatically limit the bandwidth for Steam when required? This is what you can do with Untangle, a firewall which has been around for 16 years and is mostly found in business networks. However, it also has a lot to offer for home networks and it is quite easy to set up and maintain. So in today's video I want to run you through the setup process on a Sotec C1327, which based on what I heard from other users, should do at least 500 megabits per second when FQCuddle is enabled in Untangle. I know, it uses Realtek chips for the network interfaces, which most admins would not use in an office network. But for a home network, these are more than fine. Even though the Sotec has a Wi-Fi antenna which is supported by Untangle, I highly recommend that you use access points to build your local Wi-Fi. You can use any access point you like. I prefer Unify access points from Ubiquiti, which I've deployed on many sites over the past few years and they have never let me down. Let me know if you would like to see an updated setup guide for these in the future. But in the meantime, you can find the link in the description which takes you to my old setup guide for these access points. Now, the first thing that you must do is make sure that you can even use your own router. If you are not sure, then please call your internet service provider and tell them what you want to do. Untangle cannot replace your modem. In case that you must use the device that you got from your internet service provider, you should ask if they can switch it to modem or bridge mode. If that is not possible, then you must at least be able to set up a DMC or exposed host as it's called on the Fritzbox to get all ports forwarded to Untangle. If none of that is possible, then it might not make sense to try to use your own router. Untangle itself doesn't cost anything and you can install it on any PC which you can run Debian on. However, I want to use Untangle because of its bandwidth control application and that is not free. 
so I could buy a license just for that single application. But when you use it at home, then it makes much more sense to simply get the Home Pro license, which costs 50 US dollars per year and allows you to use all the Untangle applications. But you don't have to buy that license right away, as you can use all applications for free for 14 days, which gives you enough time to decide if you want to use this firewall. So to install Untangle, you download the USB image, download, install and run Win32 Disk Imager, select the Untangle image, create an MD5 hash and compare that one to the one on the website to make sure that the file was not damaged during the download. When I first tested Untangle, my image got corrupted during the download and that resulted in issues during the installation. So even though the step might seem redundant, it can save you a lot of time. Now write the image onto the USB drive and then verify that the data on the drive is ok. Untangle 14 is built upon Debian 9 and at least on the Zotac, it won't boot when the BIOS is in pure UEFI mode, which is why I must change it to legacy mode. If your mainboard does not support that, then you might not be able to use Untangle 14. Then boot from the USB drive, select graphic install, follow the installer and reboot. Now, where other firewalls would greet you with the command line interface, Untangle allows you to use Chrome. Here I then launch the setup wizard, select home for the install type, select the correct time zone, set the secure admin password and add my email address. Here we now see the external or WAN interface, internal which is the LAN interface and gamma which is the wireless LAN of the Zotac. Now I plug the network cable coming from my modem into one of the two LAN ports of the Zotac. As you can see here, the internal interface went up, which means that I plugged it into the wrong port. So I disconnect it, connect it to the other port on the Zotac and now the external interface goes up. Untangle will be my new DHCP server, which hands out IP addresses to all devices in my local network. And since all my devices currently have an IP address, which was assigned by the previous router, I must shut down all PCs, consoles, TVs, access points, wireless speakers, etc. Disable Wi-Fi on all phones and tablets and disconnect all network cables from the network switch to prevent that multiple devices use the same IP addresses once Untangle starts to assign IP addresses. Also, if you have a static IP address configured on one of your devices, then now is the time to deal with these as well. Then I take another network cable, plug it into the second port of the Zotac, connect it to my network switch and make sure that the internal interface goes from disconnected to connected. Lastly, do yourself a favor and label the network ports. Now I must configure the internet connection. What you have to enter here depends on your internet connection. Don't try to use my settings as they won't work for you. As I said in the beginning of this video, if you are not sure if you can use your own router, then you must talk to your internet service provider and ask them. Once you are done, test the connection and if it works, move on to the configuration of the internal network or your LAN. Here you can set the internal address, where I want to use 192.168.1 instead of 192.168.2. Even though I won't use the Wi-Fi from the Zotac, I still have to enter something to proceed to the next step. Then I keep automatic updates and the command center connection enabled, which is a pretty nice feature as it allows you to remotely manage your router from the Untangle website. Next you want to create a new account or if you already have one, log in with your existing Untangle account. Now you can either install the recommended apps or install them manually, which is what I want to do. But before I show you the applications, I want to go to config, network, edit internal interface and make sure that the DHCP range leaves some room to assign static IP addresses in case that I need to. Next, I want to disable the gamma or Wi-Fi interface as I have my own Unify access points. Then always make sure that you click on the small save button in the lower right corner, which is sadly very easy to miss. Now let's run a speed test to find out how much bandwidth I have and to see how bad my buffer bloat is. Since the Untangle box is the only device which is currently connected to the internet, I get a good measurement for my total up and downstream bandwidth as well as how bad my buffer bloat is, which is really bad as you can see here. Then I go to Advanced, QoS and enable QoS. 
Now, when you enter the download and upload bandwidth here in kilobits per second, then you must make sure that your connection can always provide that bandwidth. If you get less bandwidth, like in the evening, then you must enter that value here. QoS cannot work properly if you enter values which are higher than your actual upload and download bandwidth. Then don't forget to save and run the speed test again, where you should not see any ping spikes anymore and get an A plus buffer bloat rating. Now, while UPnP raises security concerns, because you basically allow any application in your network to punch a hole into your firewall, you might still want to or need to enable it for games like Warframe, Destiny, Ghost Recon Wildlands, etc. or consoles in general as you might otherwise face a strict net status. Just be aware that this decreases the overall security of your home network. Now it's time to log out of Untangle on the Soltech reconnect all my network devices to my network switch, power up all Wi-Fi speakers, access points, etc. and enable Wi-Fi on my phones and tablets, so that they get an IP address from Untangle's DHCP server. Then I connect to the Untangle box from one of my PCs by using the IP address 192.168.1.1. And now it's time to look at the apps. The applications that I want to install first are Bandwidth Control, Application Control and Reports. Then I go to Bandwidth Control, run the setup wizard which uses the values that I entered in the QoS tab earlier and for configuration I recommend Home, which I had great results with in my home network. Then I go to Rules, Add, as description I use Steam Download, Add Condition, Application Control Application, Enter Steam as value, Priority Low, Done and Save. Now all Steam traffic has a low priority, which means that it can use up to 100% of my bandwidth, but there are only 6% reserved for Steam. Now how do I check if this rule works? And how can I find the application name of other services that I might want to add a rule for? First I launch Steam and have it download something. Then inside Untangle I go to Sessions and look for a session that has some downstream traffic. Like this one here, where you can see Steam as application name. When we then look at the session details, then we can see that the bandwidth control priority is set to low. So this rule is working and Steam won't interfere with my gaming traffic anymore, even when it creates that many TCP sessions for a single download. When you add a new rule or change one, then you must know that these changes will not affect existing connections. So if that Steam download would have been active before I created that rule, then it would not have been affected by it. So that is something that you must keep in mind or you will spend a lot of time trying to find out why your rules don't seem to work. Another application that I want to install is the web filter. That app is very useful in the business environment where you might want to prevent access to in example Facebook or other sites that might distract your employees. But what I want to use it for is to block access to sites which are known to spread viruses, malware or are used for phishing attacks botnets or other things that can cause damage on my clients. You can also try to use the fish blocker, intrusion prevention and virus blocker to make your network even more secure. I can't really comment on these apps though because I haven't used them much yet. However, even with these apps installed, you must understand that they only add an additional layer to your security concept. But you must still use your brain when browsing the internet or when you get emails with suspicious links inside or files attached. After all, careless users are still the biggest security threat. Now you might have noticed that I did not install the firewall application. The reason for that is that since I run Untangle in router mode, all inbound sessions are already blocked by NET or network address translation, except for those incoming connections that I explicitly allow by creating port forwarding rules, which I haven't done and most of you won't ever do, unless you need remote access to a NAS, a surveillance camera or something like that. Sadly, many players are under the false impression that they must create port forwarding rules for their games to work, or even place their console inside a DMC which completely exposes this device to the internet. Even though many developers provide information on what ports a game uses, it is not required to create port forwarding rules to play a game. This is only meant as a troubleshooting step in case that you have net issues or for games that require UPnP and you don't want to enable that service. 
So since all inbound connections are already blocked by net, the firewall application does not block nor flag anything by default when you install it. It is up to you to decide if you even need that application, where in a home environment the answer will be no in 99.9% .9 of all cases. So with the setup that I showed you here you get a good solution, which makes sure that online gaming is not affected by other traffic, while not heavily limiting the bandwidth of other applications all the time. I've been using Untangle at home since I made that video about why neither PFSense nor OpenSense are an option for a home environment like mine, where multiple people play the same game at the same time, where some require UPnP to work properly. Since I deployed Untangle in my home I did not have a single issue, and that's with two teenage kids which use the internet a lot, as do my wife and I. So if your needs exceed what you can get from an off-the-shelf router and you want to add a bit more security to a network with apps like WebFilter, then I would like to encourage you to try Untangle, take use of the 14-day trial to test its applications, and if you have any questions, then please share them in the description down below. And that's all for today. Big shout out to my patrons for their support which allows me to do videos like this one. If you enjoy my content and would like to support me as well, then you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below, where you will also find links to my social accounts in case that you want to stay up to date on the videos that I'm working on. So if you enjoyed this video then please give it a like, subscribe for more and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have a nice day and take care. My name is Chris and this was Battle Nonsense.